Welcome to WMS. My name is Philip Glazier. I'm senior epidemiologist at the World Health Organization's top TB department in Geneva. During this micro lecture, I'm going to talk about the epidemiology of TB. I will cover time trends in TB and the main determinants of TB, the situation now, and whether we can eliminate TB in this lifetime. TB is transmitted from people with active TB to susceptible individuals. Transmission occurs through aerosols generated by cough. Infection occurs from inhalation of the TB germ mycobacterium tuberculosis and most often nothing else happens. But in 5 to 15% of individuals, the TB germ further multiplies and TB disease develops. Time between infection and disease may range from a few days to several decades. Now let us examine time trends in TB. Paleopathological evidence from 7000 BCE suggests that TB was a very common cause of death in prehistorical times and also that the risk of dying from TB very slowly declined over the past several millennia. More recent evidence from countries with nationwide records of death and their cause over the past century indicate that TB declined well before effective treatment for the disease became available. Contributing factors to the decline in TB include economic development, improved nutrition and living conditions, and improved hygiene. After World War II, TB incidence declined at a rate of about 10% per year in Western Europe, driven by such factors as universal access to health, including high coverage of health insurance, rapid and sustained economic development with low unemployment rates, and high coverage of effective TB diagnostic and care services, including effective chemotherapy. Over the past 20 years, TB incidence and mortality arose and peaked in the 2000s. The rise in TB burden was to a great extent due to the expansion of the HIV pandemic. This is because people who become infected with HIV are about 20 times more likely to develop TB disease after infection compared with people not infected with HIV and living in the same place. Also, the prognosis of TB among HIV-infected individuals is much more severe, with a greater case fatality ratio, particularly in the absence of adequate care for both TB and HIV, including life-saving antiretroviral therapy. TB incidence is now falling at a slow rate of about 2% per year. The main reason why TB incidence is falling so slowly despite worldwide availability of effective drugs to treat TB is the following. 2.3 billion individuals are estimated to be infected with TB. In many of them, infection occurred years or even decades in the past. Even if TB transmission could be completely stopped now, there would still be a steady number of new TB cases occurring every year from the very large pool of infected individuals. An illustration of the problem comes from Japan, where TB transmission levels were very high after World War II, resulting in a large proportion of the population acquiring infection. The graph shows TB rates by age group over time since 1962. TB incidence rates are to order of magnitude greater in the older stage groups compared with the younger stage groups. There is hardly any transmission now, as shown by the extremely low incidence in children since the early 2000s. However, all people who were infected decades ago developed the disease at a rate that is now similar to that observed in developing nations with a high burden of TB. The problem of persistent TB incidence due to reactivation of past infection is naturally aggravated by the aging of the population and increasing life expectancy. Nowadays, HIV is the single most important risk factor for developing TB. Other well-known determinants of TB are related to poverty, crowding, malnutrition. However, non-communicable diseases such as obesity, diabetes, cigarette smoking also have a significant impact on TB, and in an increasing number of countries with rapidly developing economies, the lack of decline in TB burden or the observed resurgence of TB can be partly attributed to a rapid rise in modern, in modern diseases driven by unhealthy lifestyles. The top panel of this graph shows the rapid rise of the prevalence of HIV in Kenya, which peaked in the late 1990s. The bottom panel shows the impact of HIV on TB case notifications depicted with a solid black line, 
which increased and peaked about seven years after the peak in HIV. TB is now slowly declining in Kenya. I will now show some world maps of the current TB situation. The largest numbers of new TB cases are in India and China. 22 countries shown in red on this map account for about 80% of the total number of new TB cases in the world. Most of those 22 countries are in Asia and in Africa. However, the countries with the highest incidence rates, or in other words, the highest rate risk of TB per capita, are for the most part in Sub-Saharan Africa, in countries the most affected by the HIV pandemic. High rates of TB incidence are also observed in several countries of Asia and in a few Pacific Island nations. This map shows the distribution of HIV prevalence among new TB cases. In Southern Africa, two-thirds of TB cases are infected with HIV. HIV-associated TB is often more difficult to detect and requires adequate care to prevent early mortality. HIV-associated TB severely affects already stretched health systems in many African countries. TB mortality rates are also highest in countries of Southern Africa due to their association between TB and HIV. TB associated with HIV has a much higher case fatality than TB in HIV negative individuals and survival depends heavily on the quality of care and the availability of antiretroviral therapy initiated early in the course of TB treatment. Can we accelerate the decline in TB? This diagram shows how TB control measures may work. Cutting the chain of transmission requires first effective detection and treatment of existing cases, second the implementation of infection control measures to protect the people in contact with TB cases particularly in health facilities, and third, a vaccine that prevents infection to take place in the organism. Preventing the transition from infection to disease requires either an effective post-exposure vaccine, which is not yet available, or a safe and effective prophylaxis treatment. TB incidence cannot be expected to decline at a faster rate than the 10% per year observed in Western Europe after World War II, unless an effective strategy to prevent the disease in the 2.3 billion infected individuals is implemented on a very large scale. TB incidence remains high in many parts of the world and is falling at a rate of only 2% per year globally. The acceleration of the decline in incidence and reaching the global target of TB elimination by 2050 as defined as less than one case per million population will require strategy to prevent the disease in people already infected. Such a strategy will require post-exposure vaccine or a safe and effective prophylactic treatment prescribed on a very large scale. In the meantime, improvements in case detection and in care will contribute to cutting the chain of transmission. Universal access to essential health services is an essential step to ensuring effective and early case detection along with rapid diagnostics at the point of care. New vaccines, diagnostics and more effective drugs are needed, requiring more investments in research and development efforts and more investments to, to strengthen the delivery of, of care. Thank you for watching WMS.